The artworks that I make are usually personal in some way. They have references to other things and symbols. They're rarely representational. But in this particular series of work, what I wanted to do was to bring a landscape that I'm really familiar with into life and to imbue it with all those personal things that I see, I get out there every day with the dogs and the rhythm of the seasons, the rhythm of walking, the rhythm of that time to think and space to compose ideas and prepare, to bring that into some kind of visual focus. So although rural, we are surrounded by evidence here of the urban landscape and the sounds that go with that, literally planes, trains and automobiles. But they're interlaced and interspersed with the simpler, calmer sounds of the bird song and the river and the wind. The surfaces that I'm trying to create are mixtures of composition, including different textures, different forms and shapes. And to be able to get to that point, I need to gather things to start with. That does involve those initial drawings and images and text, and then start to bring in technique experiments and surface experiments, along with the conceptual development. Gradually, they kind of form into the piece as it develops. Early in the making process and then return to repeatedly, I take time to find somewhere a calm, still place outside of the usual cacophony of life. However I achieve that, it is in this space where my ideas begin to develop. It might be called active daydreaming or perhaps working underneath. And there, chance and idle thinking are able to play in my mind so long as I allow that deliberate openness. I use textile techniques but with more unusual materials such as metal and metal cloths and it's the mixing of these textiles then with other media that give me the scope to investigate the surface qualities that I can achieve. There comes a point when the deadline's there, the work has to go to an exhibition, it's going to be shown in public. 
that's quite an anxious transition time very often because it's been a very private process until this point. However, now you're going to have the work out in public, you're not with it, you're not there to explain it or talk to people about it. And then in hanging the work, putting it along with other people's work changes both your work and theirs. The way that it's hung in a gallery or the space that it's in is really important and affects the perception of the people that are seeing that for the first time. These particular works in this series were concentrating on the perspectives and facets that are most obvious in a winter landscape. But I really didn't want to be constrained by the colours. I wanted it to be bright and dazzling and dense colours and loads of texture. What I was hoping for was that that allowed the person viewing the piece in the end to think that there are stories and there is life here. It is not just an open, wide, empty landscape. There is always that question, when is a work complete? Quite often that's just when it's time for it to be presented and get out there. But at the same time there are always new ideas, new challenges, new thoughts that are developing whilst you're making the work. It's a very circular process. So as soon as that work is finished, it's time for the next pieces to start developing and off we go again in that cycle of creation.